What's up guys, Trex here, and welcome to the TexW's Top 10 Games of 2014 Awards. It has been quite a while, and this list is long overdue. This was supposed to come out sometime in January, but then some personal issues going on. Um, I'm not going to get into those. Maybe a later time in a job my life or something, if I ever do one of those. So I'm not going to get into that, but I'm trying to sort of get back into YouTube. I'm trying to end the hiatus. You guys have been waiting long enough. It's been over a month now. This list is long overdue. As I said, it's February, and this list needs to go out. So, yeah, here it is. This is my second game awards, the first being TXW's Top 10 Games of 2013 Awards, which you can check out in the link below, uh, in the description below. This list will be like other lists, but we will have a few rules. Most of these rules I broke on the last list, so I'm trying not to do that with this list. Number one, no early access alpha or beta games. If a game is not fully finished, it cannot be justly judged. I made this mistake in my last game awards with Kerbal Space Program taking the number two slot on my awards and BMG Drive taking the number seven slot, I believe. Uh, even though those games were unfinished, uh, I should have played other games. I should have waited. And this does not mean that all the early access games don't deserve spots on the list. In fact, there are several games that are worthy of the number two, number three spot on this list, but are unfinished. These games include games such as Prison Architect, which I just started playing this year and is now uh, my third most played game on Steam, right behind Kerbal Space Program which, with 69 hours, and Terraria with 510 hours. I have 64 to 65 hours in Prison Architect from just this year. Quite a fantastic game. Mini Metro, quite a fantastic little management game. I really like the management genre. Now, Bro Force and the next card game, Wreckfest. All those games are incredible. Go play them. They are solid early access games. They're uh, definitely worth however much they are. Prison Architect is $30. It's a little expensive, but it'll get down to $6 to $10 in a sale. So wait for that, but it's a solid, solid game. Sorry, guys. There may be some pauses in this. I'm still getting back into the YouTube thing once again. I'm making all these hand gestures that you can't see. Ay, 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 ay. Anyways, all these games uh, will undoubtedly be placed on a list in the future. Games such as Prison Architect, which is set for release in 2015, and Kerbal Space Program, which is set for re a release in 2015. So now, only games that are released in 2014 will make this list. I made this mistake with Ter Terraria last year, giving it my number one spot because of the 1.2 update. However, the game was released years prior, and it was therefore ineligible. This means the game that I played this year and enjoy cannot make the list, such as Portal 2, which, are, which originally came out in 2011, but I played through entirely in 2014, and a bit of Eleanor I played a bit. Anyways, now, before we get on with the list, let's see some of the honorable mentions. These games are great, don't get me wrong, but they just didn't make the cut. My honorable mentions for Top 10 Games of the Year for 2014 are these games. They are all fantastic, I suggest you go play them, they just didn't make the list. They are Jazz Punk, the fantastic little. What, 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 what can you even say to, to describe Jazz Punk? It's so quirky and colorful and vibrant, and full of life. It is such a fun game. It'll only take you a few hours to play through. It is worth it. I highly suggest you go play it. It is quite a fantastic game. Loof Rousers is another fantastic little 2D. How do you describe it? A 2D arcade shmup, I guess you could say. Except it's a shmup to new extensions. It's past bullet hell. It's bullet apocalypse. Loop browser is, in is incredible. There's an incredible amount of customization in there as well. Highly suggest you go check it out. And then also Banish. Banish is an incredible little city builder made by one guy. It's the Sim City of medieval ostracism, I guess you could say. It is quite a fantastic game. Go pick it up. It's eight dollars to fifteen dollars on Steam. Pretty good. Uh, not not that great in the end game, but while you're playing it, it's really good. So I suggest you go and play that. So go pick these games up the next time they are on sale, as they are quite good. Now, without further ado, let's get on with the awards. Starting with number ten, this may come as a bit of a shocker, as it wasn't a very popular game. Not very many people played it, but yeah, this game number ten was minimum. This game was a surprise, and I heavily debated between this and Jazz Punk. In the end, though, Minimum took the spot. Minimum is a minimalistic action multiplayer shooter with swords, knights, armor, and turkeys during Thanksgiving. The fast-paced gameplay makes every match different, and no one player will be overly skilled, unlike the other multiple multiplayer shooters. Call of Duty and Battlefield, I am looking at you. Minimum isn't just a run and running gun game, though. It has quite a few fun. It has quite fun and exciting sword gameplay. 
There are three different game modes to minimum. The standard team deathmatch, which you'll see in most shooters these days. The unique titan mode, in which players power up titans and defend them as they clash. And the horde mode, where a team of four players must battle zombies, astronauts, and the like. It's got fun gameplay, beautiful graphics, and varied game modes. That is what gives minimum my number 10 game of the year for 2014. Now on to number 9. Strider. Yes, Strider, the remake of the classic NES title, does a ninja slide into 9th place. When I watched Nerdkey play Strider, I thought the game was okay. When I played, I was blown away. I'm not even joking when I say the first real boss you fight is a giant mechanical dragon flying at several thousand feet in the air, and in the fight you must sprint down its back, dodge 20 missiles, and climb up its back to chop off its armor. Oh, Strider, what a great game. Besides the great gameplay, the game has also quite a nice art style. It cleverly blends elements of comic books and cel shaded graphics to create beautiful enemies, explosions, and environments. Strider doesn't just look great, it's very, very fun. There are few things in games more satisfying than running through a wave of android enemies, swords blazing, barely escaping alive. I definitely recommend Strider in the next Steam sale, and it has earned my number 9 game of the year for 2014. Let's throw ourselves at number 8, Turbo Dismount. This game is not YouTuber bait like most other indie games popular on the interwebs this year. <coughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. <coughs> this game is actually fun. There's a multitude of tracks, a fleet of vehicles, and endless custom ability. You can even put your own face on the character, or in my case, put your arch enemy's face on Mr. Dismount, put him in an officer, and throw him full speed of a cliff in the track. The game also has Steam Workshop support, which means endless maps as long as the game has community. Which it does, as it is quite a solid game. Turbo Dismount speeds into the number 8 game of the year for 2014. War is Hell. These words echoed through my mind as I played number 7. This War of Mine. This War of Mine focuses not on the soldiers fighting in war, but the citizens living in the wartime environment. This War of Mine is the polar opposite of a Nintendo game, and instead of cheery colors, casual gameplay, and fun characters, you get a gray, sketchy settling with brutal gameplay in which you must steal from other people trying to survive and kill innocents so that you and your group may stay alive. Your characters are dark, gritty characters that are actually human, unlike most games. They have benefits and flaws, backstories and personalities. They'll be depressed, tired, and hungry almost constantly. This War of Mine is not a fun game, but it is a memorable one. This War of Mine sneaks its way to my number 7 game of the year for 2014. Now for number 6. Nidhogg. If you're looking to play Nidhogg by yourself, it's passable. If you're looking to play with other people, it is a must-have. Nidhogg is a competitive fencing game with a beautiful art style, fun gameplay, and ultra-competitive multiplayer. The pixel art style makes the game great. The gameplay includes sword throw, sword box, sword stab, shoving your sword forward and backward in your enemy's lifeless body, and leg sweeps. This leads to an ultra-competitive local and online multiplayer, as the AI is not too much of a match for human opponents. You can play with friends, you can play online, everything is great. Nidhogg is a great game to play at parties, and is my number 6 game of the year for 2014. Onwards and downwards to number 5. The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth. In The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth, you play as Isaac, alongside many other characters as you venture further and further into the depths of Mom's horde basement, collecting items, fighting enemies, and defeating bosses until you get to Mom. The extreme difficulty of this game makes it very addictive, and the procedurally generated dungeon-like rooms will have you going back saying, just one more run, until you end up playing to 3 in the morning. I'm not saying that I've done that, but I've done that. Anyways, the vast, dial the vast catalog of items makes every run different, as it is very unlikely to get an item you've seen before unless you're in Northern Line and eat, sleep, and drink the Binding of Isaac. Total Biscuit described Rebirth as a Northern Line money printing simulator, and that's just what it is. I was unsure about this game at first, I saw the NerdCube video, and even though I loved the original Binding of Isaac, I didn't think this one looked too appealing. The pixelated 16-bit graphic style did not appease my taste, but when I downloaded this game in the Steam sale and I played it, I loved it. It is a vast improvement over the original. It is more worth it if you're looking at this game and you don't already own the original, well, why wouldn't you? It's like 99 cents in every Steam sale. But anyways, if you're looking at this game, buy it. It is great. If you love the original, buy this game twice. Send one to a friend. It is such a fantastic game. This game cries its way into my number 5 game of the year for 2014. Number 4 is small, but great. 
Toy Box Turbos. Toy Box Turbos brings back the old Micro Machine series in a new shiny game with improved graphics and physics. This game plays phenomenally, as at any point you can go from first to last just by hitting a pencil sharpener wrong. Ugh. This game also has a very active and fun online multiplayer, and the single player is not too shabby, keeping you entertained for hours. The game may be a bit expensive for its length, but it's definitely a game to get. Toy Box Turbos zooms its way to my number 4 game of the year for 2014. We are now in the top three games of 2014. This game was originally number two, but after much debate, this game was bumped up to number three, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight brings back the days of the classic NES Metroidvania platformers like Castlevania and Super Metroid. It combines elements of Metroid, Mega Man, and Mario in a beautiful 16-bit art style. There are so many games that attempt to be a retro throwback game and most fail. However, Shovel Knight has found the solution to this problem. Could it be the shovel-wielding shovel pr protagonist? Could it be the fun gameplay and fantastic level design? Could it be the beautiful art style? One thing is for certain, all these elements combine into one dang good game. Shovel Knight digs its way into my number two game of the year for 2014. This game was originally number three on my list. However, after much playtime and debate, I moved this game to number two. My favorite game of the year, number two, is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I didn't expect to play this game. From what I'd seen, it looked like another open world movie tie in, trying to live up to the Batman Arkham franchise legacy. However, when I saw the game on sale for just $17 on Kingwin.net, out of its $50 price tag on Steam, I just had to buy it. My goodness, I was blown away. The game features the parkour of Assassin's Creed, the combat of Batman Arkham series, the beauty of Just Cause 2, and the lore of my favorite Middle Earth. This game is especially dear to me considering my channel is themed all around Lord of the Rings. The game fits nicely with the channel's theme and there will most likely be videos on it sometime. The game could have so easily been a generic, boring game not worth remembering except for the phenomenal nemesis, nemesis, nemesis system. Sorry, still getting back into this. Except for the phenomenal Nemesis system. This system allows you to write your own stories for the game. You may have to bring a captain to power in order to kill him later. The system also for forms grudges, as you will have rivals who will try to track you down and kill you. I, I know I attempted to kill one captain several times, each time ending with his escape, until finally I snuck up on him, decapitated him in glorious slow motion, only to have him return a few days later with scars where I decapitated him. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor rides a Caragor into my number two game of the year for 2014. Finally, we are here at number one. This game was not my favorite game of the year, that going to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. However, this game was the best game of the year. I don't even know why this game was so good, but I'm not showing you guys the game. So what is this game? Well, number one is Valiant Hearts The Great War. This game should not have been good. It had no right to be good. It was made by Ubisoft, who had the troubled releases of their games all year, especially for Assassin's Creed Poopity. I mean, Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar was a better Assassin's Creed game than Assassin's Creed Poopity. However, this game blew every expectation I had set right out of the water. Valiant Hearts was not the best made game in the world, I know that when I was on the labyrinth level, the entire background disappeared and the door disappeared and the dynamite disappeared and I just wound up playing the level several times. As, of course though, because this is Ubisoft making it, they're not going to be perfect. It an interesting but slightly unintimidating puzzles and good gameplay, but the thing that blew this game out of the water was the story. In the story, you'll follow your four and a half main characters in their lives during the Great War, World War I. You'll follow Emil, the farmer turned soldier. Freddy, the American saving overseas, serving overseas. Carl, Emil's son in law who is forced to fight for his home country of Germany. Anna, the medic who saves lives on the battlefield. And of course, Walt, the half man character. The dog who is with Emil, Freddy, Anna, and Carl almost every step of the way. During this game, I laughed, I cried, I hated it, I loved it, and overall enjoyed the game. I'll admit it, at the end, I had to. Stop playing, close the game, turn off my computer, and go lie in bed, and cry for about 30 minutes. Okay, maybe two hours. The story is unforgettable, and the characters are incredible, and I can't wait for the hopeful sequel, 
for World War II, which will hopefully someday come. I mean, there was a teaser after the credits. Valiant Hearts The Great War is my game of the year for 2014. It's $15 on Steam, although it'll usually go down to around 6 in a sale. It's an incredible game. Buy it, do yourself a favor, it'll probably run on most computers. It's not that graphics intensive. Do yourself a favor, buy Valiant Hearts. This is the definite major standout game of this year that will go down in history. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. A lot of time and effort went into making this list, so a like would be greatly appreciated. Sorry I've been on hiatus for so long, you guys have been so supportive, and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you all for sticking with me with 2,500 subs while I was on break, so I guess this is kind of uh, special for that, although not really. <sighs> Save your money on Assassin's Creed Poopity by Valiant Hearts, it's, that's what I have to say. Also, Shadow Mortar over on Kingwood.net, really cheap, really good. Was this a good year for Ubisoft? No, but they did have a few good games. So thank you all for watching, if you liked the video, then be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel, it really helps out a lot. I'll have another another one of these lists next year, as there are so many great games to come in 2015, it's going to be so difficult. Anyways guys, see you next time. Goodbye.